to be like a to be a, a fan of a good dog. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't like dogs, just pick a pick a dog. You're just like that's your good dog. I put all my money on that dog. That dog right there. Oh yeah, we're recording by the way. <coughs> all right, are we in it? Is yeah. Is all the levels good? Yeah, presumably. The mic. The mic's oh. actually very good on your the side. Mic, the mic's tasty. Yep. We good. I'm just putting my notes down here. Mm, got some notes. Yeah, and we're like 24 <laughs> seconds in already. What episode are we on? I don't know. Eight, I think. Let's go with that. Yeah. Let's go with that. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome to episode eight of Pug Crabs. It's a real one this time. And I'm going to turn the levels down. I shouted a bit. Yeah. Oh, no, shouting's fine. I didn't mean to do a shout. But you did. Uh, Yeah. But we can't change the past. I'm an obnoxious boy. So, yeah, episode eight, Pug Crabs. Jim's necking his um, Coke brand brand product. Coke vanilla product. Both got Coke vanilla. Mine's slightly flatter than Jim's because I bought mine ages ago. Yep, I paid through the nose for mine. <laughs> yeah, so did I. Oh. But yeah, um, we're good. How are you at home? Now we wait. And when you get back to us, we'll keep going. Yeah. Uh, episode 8. We've had a couple... I want to sort of get, get right to it on this one. Are we going to start off with your favourite segment? Or um, are we going to... Uh, so we have a topic today. Also, we're back in the Manubio we because are. I couldn't be asked We've to book this, a proper sound studio. I do love this sweet little sound studio because I have to sit on a tall chair. And I have to sit on a short chair. So it's, getting it's a, the microphone in check is um, always a hassle. Yeah. But, but we, got, we got it this time. It's nice. And hopefully the levels are all good. I know in the past we've had a few issues where I've been talking a bit weird. Um, but I finally learned how to use my microphone. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> So we should be good. Uh, now, some of you may remember last time we didn't really do a real episode of Pod Crabs because we got so deep into Garfield Yeah. that it was a bit scary. So I thought I'd bring us back to reality with um, a little update on Frankie Munoz. Oh, grand. Yes, um, because the, the the boy Munez has been... Um, has he been doing stuff? He's up to some stuff. He's up, um, is he up to his old tricks? Yeah, I want to start with this tweet from a- April 11th. Um... I thought you weren't able to smell your own breath. See, Jim's just smelled his own breath. It smells like... Mm. smells like cigarettes and coffee. Yeah, which is Jim's diet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never known you to eat anything other than cigarettes. Yeah, they're delicious. <laughs> just, like, if I'm gonna... You just munch them down. Yeah, like, if I'm ever making something along with, like, I don't know, tuna pasta, mm. then I'll, I'll crush up a couple of diaries in there, and that will be my fiber. Yeah, see, that's... So, like, you know what you've eaten based on how you can smell your breath. Yeah, what does your breath smell like? Um, surprisingly, I think my hand smells of your cigarette smoke. <laughs> so, um, I'm hard to get... You know what? Maybe I'm Breathe on me. This one. It doesn't really smell of anything. There you go. I'm like a baby's poo. Yeah. <laughs> I smell of nothing. I can tell you for a fact that baby's poo <laughs> smells of everything that's bad. It smells oh, like luncheon gym. meat. Oh. Yeah. Is that because the baby just keeps eating luncheon meat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you keep feeding it some fake ham. You know, there you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Frankie Munez can't smell his own breath, apparently. Or he thought you couldn't. Which, like... That we... suggests to me that he discovered for the first time that he could. I know. But when you're in a situation where you discover like your breath that generally means that someone has said or you've noticed that your breath doesn't smell good yeah it's never a situation where like well oh my breath smells good today i'd have thought if there was anyone who could smell their own breath frequently it would be nascar driver and helmet wearer frankie muniz yeah because i those helmets go right all the way around they they? go all the way around and having worn a full face helmet several times in my life it's quite easy to stank up one of them so i imagine muniz maybe you've just had some nose problems you should get that checked out man frankie i've got some vicks if you want it yeah frankie come over come over to our house and we'll give you some vicks give you some vicks um also in frankie muniz he says um hello switzerland hi and two days later he says Goodbye, Life Swiss- is precious. Oh. Don't waste it. Is that based on his experiences in Switzerland? Christ knows. <laughs> See, like, the joy of Frankie Muniz's tweets, is, as far as I can tell. They're them, very vague. It, yeah. It, it, they're, they're, like, contextless. <laughs> and then, like, sort of semi-frequent. To the point of, like, I don't really know what and what, what's going on with my boy Frankie. My good friend Frankie Muniz. I hope. <laughs> But then after that, he says Bonjour Paris, which is nice. Oh, well. Um, Why did he say hello, Switzerland? See, that was what I was about to say. Like, I like that he made the effort for the French. But but he didn't for the Swiss. No, they don't deserve it. Why? Well, they're neutral, aren't they? No, they're pretty neutral, yeah. No half measures for Frankie Muniz. (laughs) 
He's yeah. either go hard or go home. <laughs> exactly. And that's his attitude in the car. It's all or nothing with him. You know, yeah. you either can or you can't smell your own breath. And you either can or you can't come in 20th. <laughs> Has so, he been up to any other japes? Uh, well, he then goes on to say, we we we, we spoke in private about the, the Mal- Meet What, you Malcolm. and Frankie Muniz? No, me and you. Oh. Um, <laughs> about the Meet Malcolm event, which I wish I was at. Apparently that was in Paris as well. Oh. So, like, I should have sent... <laughs> I should have sent my sister, who lives in Paris, to to go and meet Malcolm. Lucy! Lucy, if you're listening... Get there now! I love you. Um, But also, go go meet Malcolm in the past. He's waiting for you in the (laughs) past. Um, But I guess life is just unfair like that. Now, the title, Meet Malcolm, yeah, (laughs) that suggests to me a few things. Yeah. It it presents a situation where I could meet the boy wonder, Mm -hmm. um, that's now just a a, a (laughs) 30-year-old. No, he's a man-boy wonder. (laughs) Because he still looks like a child. Yeah. Um, or it presents the opportunity for a Malcolm that is made of meat. See, I thought it meant like you could meet, you could meet up Malcolm. You could like throw meat at Malcolm. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> it, in in every way it suggests like meat. Like products. that baby that you kept feeding lunch and meat. You just sort of slap him with a bit of ham. Just. Yeah, like, like land on him and stick to him. Yeah, because it's always mm. got that slimy grippiness to it. Yeah, like. If I could make tires out of something, I'd and make them out of meat. At the end of the day, once he's like finally been covered in salami, <laughs> he'd just be like, I'm the meat Malcolm. And, <laughs> and everyone's you, like, wait. You can like chase him around the building for a bit. And then every time a bit of salami falls <laughs> off, you're like, oh, that's mine. <laughs> and then the agent comes in and is like, right, everyone go home. Frank, Frankie's done here. Frankie's done. He's um, very spotty now. He looks more boyish because he's covered. <laughs> he's almost prepubescent well, again. Speaking of bad meat, Frankie then goes on to say five days ago, um, Currently having tremendous results on the Kardashian diet. Food poisoning is killing me. Oh, see, so, like, so I mean, tremendous results, like, because tremendous is a neutral term, mm. like, much to a lot of people's confusion. Like, tremendous yeah, yeah. is is an extreme of something bad or good. Yeah, it's just like very. So is he recommending? Because I don't like being a sick boy. No. Um, but is he recommending the Kardashian diet to me? I don't know. He did say kill me at the end, which was its own sort of sentence in that tweet. I see. So like, but like, has he tweeted since? Yes, he has. He's oh, he, he, so he's not dead. He's good. Well, he says you know you're really sick when you are totally okay with resting your head on a public toilet. Hashtag things you learn in Paris, which I would. No, no. Uh, having a relative that lives in Paris and being there frequently, Frankie, that's probably why you got to- food poisoning. You gotta stop drinking out the toilet. It was either that or the bad luncheon meat that you were covered in. Yeah. You probably shouldn't have had a nibble because. Like when you get if hungry. it hits your skin, it doesn't hit your mouth. That's <laughs> that's the rule with luncheon meat. If it touches your cheeks, it doesn't go in the beaks. <laughs> you keep that keep that luncheon meat out of your beak. Yeah. Frankie. Yeah. Come on, geez. That's for other Prisians. And also, like he recommends food poisoning as though it were the Kardashian diet. And I mean, was... I've had food poisoning before. Mm-hmm. And you came out looking like Kim. Yeah, like I had a huge ass and I was just fucking gross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm I'm not one for bullying. Um, no. but she's a, she's a higher power than I'll ever be, so I get it. Uh, but. But like, you know who's not a higher power than we'll ever be? Frankie Muniz. Frankie Muniz. Uh, he can have food poisoning just like the best of us. As much as you were a child star and also a NASCAR driver, we run a um, a, a relatively unknown podcast. Uh-huh. So based on your career now, I'd put us both, or I mean the three of us, at roughly the same peg. So Frankie... Collars. Yeah. I got Vicks for you. We got some luncheon meat for you. Some good luncheon meat. Some good luncheon meat. It's not going to make you sick. And yeah. you can sit on the toilet in Staffordshire. Uh, well, I mean, sit you can, with your face. Oh, can he, like, write A Up Staffordshire? I, oh! On his, um, a Up Staffordshire duck. I like it. And, and then I'd we'll give him an oat cake, and that's what was, that will give him food poisoning. And I'd love to see Frankie Muniz sort of, like, do the Meet Malcolm in Staffordshire. And it'd just be me. You. That's it. That's it. Me, you, Frankie Muniz, and we'll chase him around the podcast room because we, if we, if we get, if we get, if we, if we get Frankie Muniz on the podcast, mm. I mean, not that the Manubio. This is a very small room. This is a very small room, and he's a small boy. Mm. Um, he's a small man. He could sit comfortably in the corner. He could. We could nestle him in a corner, but I feel like his his voice hasn't changed from when he was in Malcolm in the Middle when oh, he was a shrill, quiet boy. I, I listened to him do the announcement where he's like, "Come and meet Malcolm," and I'm like, "That's, that's the same boy I knew." Like. So, 
if we if we ever get him because I feel mm. like if we carried on at this hell we're going on iTunes soon apparently. Uh, well, that's the dream. Yeah. Uh, are you a fan of RSS feeds? Neither are we. <laughs> so, <laughs> boy, I hate having to format. Listen, the reason the podcast has only been on YouTube for so long is because I'm a lazy sod. And well, we tried the SoundCloud thing, and I'm a student. I don't have money. Yes. Um, but soon that might change. Yeah. Um, so, like, hopefully, I can get the podcast hosted in a couple of other places where you'll be able to get it easier, listen to it on your phone for real, without having to like. I don't mind you using YouTube to MP3 convert. Don't tell anyone else, though. Um, <laughs> it's a secret. Uh, <laughs> that's the, if you want to listen to Unlock Podcasts on the go, that's what you got to do. Yeah, I, I choose um, is probably a better show. So I do want to fix that for you so that you can get... I would like to get it in the Google, Google Podcasts. Play I podcast didn't know that was a thing. thing. I'm pretty certain it is. Because I know not everyone uses an iPhone. And if you do... Sorry. Congratulations. Um, I, I really want an iPhone. I've I had just... Android for so long, I fucking hate it. <laughs> I hate whenever Android comes up and says, I've got too many files. Oh. Uh, just because Android won't won't prioritize my SD card. I think that's based on your phone, because mine prioritizes oh. it fine. But that's a different discussion. Yeah, but my <laughs> phone, it's like, we forgot about your SD card, and that's got like 15 gig Whoops. empty on it. And I'm like, we'll use it then. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Bad times with storage, but hopefully PodCrabs won't be affected by that and will soon be easier to achieve. Yeah, uh, after this, because this is more related to us both, more than you guys, sorry, um, I'm pretty sure you can export straight to iTunes from Premiere if you know your settings right. Uh, you can do the format, I just don't... It's uploading, it's hosting is the issue. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Because it needs to be hosted. Like, that's the thing with iTunes, and if you're listening at home and thinking about starting up a podcast... Do it, it's easy. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> oh guys, it's so it's so accessible and it gives you absolute reason to be an absolute cunt over a microphone. Exactly. Yes. And um but like yeah, the way to host it and this if you want it on iTunes is to like send them an RSS feed to a blog that has your your podcast on it. Yeah. Which is such a fucking ball. Like, Adam, that means you'd have to have a blog as I'll well. Have the, well the official podcast blog is in the works. <laughs> uh, in the works. In the works. Yeah. I don't think it necessarily has to be a blog, but iTunes iTunes is like terms of use describe it as a blog yeah. even though I think it means website which is really peculiar to me because it's like the blog must have the sound file blah 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 um, it's interesting it is it's, it's really not it's really not interesting at all it, it's it's a hassle it's and a hassle hence why we've talked about it for about five minutes now yeah so there you go that's why Podcrabs will soon be in a better place by which I mean it'll still be alive it'll just be somewhere to find yeah it will still probably go up on oh, YouTube. Oh, I'll still do the YouTube sh shenanigans because for me, for me that works better. It, when I'm listening to other podcasts, I'd rather have it on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Um, but I know that you friendly people, friendly folks at home, just it's wanna... just making it accessible, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and we want to make it like as easy for anyone that wants to listen to it because I, I want I know to be serious that... about this. Like that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It's like so far it doesn't really look like I am. But that's just our that's just our style, but, like, and it's just our situation as well. It's like we're goofy boys, we're silly boys. We're it's difficult to appear serious. But strangely, we actually know what we're doing to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, I won't get that MA that I've been studying for. Yeah. And I won't get that Coke brand sponsorship that I've been begging for. Yeah. We need it. We need it because we go Coke, through so many. Coke. I only drink it because I want that sponsorship. Coke. We only drink it because it gives us the, the rush that we need to do a podcast. Otherwise, I die. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's Frankie Me News out the way, that's Podcrab's Pod Crab, Pod update out the way. Um, also, yeah, do look out for, um, sort of, like, f future sort of side episode things when we don't record one that's good enough. Yeah, we've got, we did five episodes, was it five? Yeah, we did five pre, pre yeah. episodes. Before, before January, before, um, we sort of figured out a format that works, um, we did sort of testers and a lot of them were very good mm. well so like they're gonna go back up in some format yeah or other and then we'll probably have like little side discussions maybe maybe about um anything yeah <laughs> just just chats and it'll probably be shit that we just can't like seem to figure where else it'll go yeah it's just chopping it because we still want to give you guys some form of content and if we if we get we get you guys laughing that's sort of what we want at the end of the day yeah we're, we're doing this for our enjoyment we both we both love doing podcasts oh god yeah um, and this is like our little downtime of the week really. oh jesus this is my favorite part of the week like i got it it's it's time to go out talk about something stupid and speaking of something stupid jim i want to get to the meme potatoes of this week's pod crab <laughs> the, the meat munis and potatoes well i need to <laughs> 
I need to um, sort of give give the listeners some context on this one. Is that halfway through the week, someone watched Paul Blart Mall Cup two? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now I saw it in the cinema and then three times on DVD on the day it came out. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't me. You, 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 you fucking hurt yourself, man. <laughs> but the only reason I watched it three times was because um, Sony Pictures DVDs just autoplay after like a minute on the menu screen. Really? Yeah. That's presumptuous. And my my friend and I watched it, then watched it with the um, the audio commentary for deaf people, and then accidentally just left it on. No, so it just played three times. So of those three, mm. no, four iterations, because we can say that you watched it in four different styles there. Yeah. Like you watched it sort of not caringly, your last one. Yeah. Then you watched it with audio description. Then you watched the, the DVD experience. Yeah. And then you had the, the full the cinema experience. The full provolone, like the <laughs> t- 1080 potato yeah. yeah. um, So the silver, the silver screen. The silver screen. The Hollywood experience. The full fat silver screen. <laughs> Can you tell me which of those you prefer? Oh god, you know, it's a toss up between watching it with the deaf the death audio descriptor on. <laughs> I said deaf, I mean blind people. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> for the people that have been blessed enough to never be able to see Kevin James's face. Oh, <laughs> jealous. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that version is pretty entertaining because the man who reads it's very sterile and clinical. Um, I think I may have talked about that on podcast before. But yeah. That might have been one of the free episodes. Um, but like, the cinema experience was wild because my friends and I had, like, two of us had never seen Paul Blart Malka. I'd seen it before. Obviously, I'm not an idiot. Um, <laughs> we, but the week, so we decided to watch it on Netflix in the morning and then wander down to the cinema to catch the, the, the sequel, the second the half. The squeakquel. Part two, yeah. Paul Blart Mall Cup part two. Um, so that was like an experience because like the first film is tiring enough to watch. Like I felt like Paul Blart Mall Cup myself. I was licking candies off the floor. You to, were, you were laying energy. under little girls trying to get ice cream. <laughs> um, Thinking that that shot would go somewhere, but it really didn't. Well, it did the bit that they did in the first film. Well, where, where he, just, he just needs the shulker. Yeah. But, but like, it, in this day and age, I feel like a, a writer would make a point of having to do something like that. Oh, you know. Where they'd go, oh, he's a creep little joke. <laughs> or maybe that's just too edgy for Pimp Plot Piss Mop. Yeah, well, but, it's um, like, <laughs> it's just pandering to the fans of the original. The fan of the original. All of the film is pandering to the yeah. fans of the original. All seven of them. No. <laughs> I fucking hate that film, Adam. Yeah, Jim, it's, it's good. Um, you know, like Mike Vallely? <laughs> I love Mike V. I'm, I'm ashamed that he's in it. There are loads of, like... There are, like... Yeah. There's competent people in Yeah, some, there are people... Some... I'm not going to search, because they're just, like, extreme sports say, stars, but... Paul, Paul Blot Mop 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 2 has, like, way less competent stars in it. Yeah, oh, it, totally. Like, at least Paul Blot Mop Up 1 had Mike Vallely. Yeah. So, like, the second one has only Kevin James. Yeah. Now, when we saw it in the cinema, I, I just explained this to you outside as well, but it was, like, such an experience for us, because for us four funny boys went... Uh. We, <laughs> a troop of soft giggle boys went in <laughs> and sat in the back row. So, like, it was you It was you and Dan? No. No? It was me, Andy, Ash, and Sam. And, um, oh, okay. Hi, guys. Hi. Um... And we'd watched it in the morning on Netflix, and then we went to go see it. But it was like it was like three weeks after it came out, and it, I, it, I petitioned so hard. I had to. It took three weeks of convincing for me to get anyone to go see Paul Blart Mall Cup Two in I, the cinema. For with the me. record, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> you you had better things to be doing, like uni work. I um, I felt bad committing cash, somebody else's cash, to go and watch Transformers Four. <laughs> And I still hurt from that, yeah, because uh, I still feel betrayed. But sorry, carry on. Well, I'm a sucker for like paying to, to go these and Hollywood watch monsters. Yeah, yeah. Um, we went in to the cinema. It was three weeks after release, and it was like really. It was midday, on maybe a Thursday, and like. No one was in there, apart from one couple. Ooh. Now, when you see a couple in the cinema... Oh, you know, you know what they're doing. Especially when it's, like, a sh- clearly a shit film. Yeah. Like, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 might as well not have been playing. Yeah. Because no one in that room before we got in was there to see it. Um, and the look on their faces when <laughs> when the goof troop wandered in. <laughs> Did they stay? 
Yeah, oh. well, they, I feel like they paid for the ticket. Oh. And that's ten pounds you don't want to spend, like, casually. Yeah. So, like, they sat there, and maybe they thought we were going to leave or something. No. They, <laughs> <laughs> they sat there through the whole of Fallout World Cup 2. They did not laugh, apart from one moment. We were like screaming with laughter all the way through because we decided to just make our very own riff tracks. Um, <laughs> they, the one moment of like downtime, the guy laughed at like one of the worst jokes in the film, which was I can't remember. It was like a really bad moment where like we didn't we couldn't even riff on it. That doesn't narrow it because it was boring. Well, because yeah. <laughs> it was boring, and we heard the giggle, and then all of us burst out laughing again because <laughs> this guy laughed at like one of the jokes in the film <laughs> which i guess that's a form of bullying um we're not sorry because we know you were there to park <laughs> like, we could tell he cop blocked him i paul block more cop blocked him <laughs> well i'm gonna be honest because i watched it mm. i watched it this week on netflix mm -hmm. um because if I'm going to pay a fiver a month, I actually want to watch good stuff. So sometimes so you, so we, you watch Paul Blart Mall Cup 2. So we watch Paul Blart Mall Cup 2, <laughs> naturally. Um, yeah. I like there were a couple of moments in there. Jim, what was your reaction when Paul Blart Mall Cup's mom got fucking smacked by a truck? <laughs> 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 fucking creased up at that. <laughs> that was the only bit that made me howl. That was, yeah, that's a good moment. That's, that's a good that's moment like... because that's, that's not even good writing. That's just a thing that happens. I watched a film... <laughs> recently called wiener dog yeah it's really good it's advertised as a family comedy it's mm -hmm. not it's such a fucking dark comedy it's unreal um oh, like paul black mall cop like paul black mall cop too um and like there's a moment in that that's exactly the same where the little wiener dog spoiler alert um just runs out in the road <laughs> and just gets <laughs> nailed by a fucking truck <laughs> and like my girlfriend who loves who loves sausage dogs like they are delicious they are delicious um she she was absolutely um she was so sad that this just happened <laughs> as she slowly turned around to me who was exploding <laughs> like moments like that because i don't think that takes good writing and no, that's not even good not. timing because it's any fuck mm. any idiot can say well may maybe they can just get hit by a car which was like in the context of Paul Mall Cop too, like he's depressed and sad, and when you see why, like, <laughs> that, that has to be the shining moment of the film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like the one intern that was probably there. At, what's the studio that, that made it? Oh, uh, Sony Pictures. Yeah. Or the one with the horse. In the logo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Columbus. Like, Columbus. That's it. Yeah. The yeah. the one intern at Columbus Studios, basically. Like whilst he was getting coffee for the writers and directors, he was just in on that bit and just went, "Yeah, maybe, you maybe his mum can, maybe his mum can get hit by a car." <laughs> and they just went, "No, right, yeah, write it in." Well, I don't know. Kevin James was already just had already written it in by that. Point. God, yeah. Well, have you seen the behind the scenes of the Paul Blart Mall Cup? No, films? it's hilarious because like Kevin James records the bit of him falling down usually. Um, and then there's loads of footage of him, like, sort of sitting behind the camera and watching the playback. And then he laughs. <laughs> and that's it. Does nobody else laugh? Well, everyone else kind of, like, nervously giggles around him. And it's kind of like watching George Lucas make the, make the Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, <laughs> at least there was something riding on the Phantom Menace. Kevin, I genuinely believe Kevin James, like, actually enjoys watching himself fall over. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, like, that is self-deprecation. <laughs> yeah. I like to the, to the nth degree, but like, it's a kind of laugh where you can see him think the money's gonna come like flowing in. He's like, yes, <laughs> He's yes, like, <laughs> they'll make gifts of this. <laughs> yeah, and it's really weird. And like he looks around to the other guys, and they all like laugh in response, like, oh yeah, uh -huh, okay, uh, okay, yes, Kevin. Mr. James. Uh, it's like they're on YouTube. Go go check out um, Kevin James laughing at himself. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but just behind the scenes, Paul Blart World Cup too, because like, oh boy. Nothing you, seems more like a vacation do than you filming think, a Paul Blart film. <laughs> do you think that he did that same thing when he watched the mum get hit by a car? Oh, he must have. Or get hit by a like, milk, milk truck? If he was laughing at himself, like, reversing a Segway funny, <laughs> which goes on for way too long. Yeah, I bet. Um, like, 
if he's laughing at that, he must have fucking popped when he saw the mother go by the... No, no, because this is... It's putting me in two minds. Like, mm. I don't know... Uh, I'm going to make, a, a, like, a side note here. Any time that I, like, want to point out something, I stab my finger into the sound. Yeah, no, I've been just, like, touching the walls it's a lot today it's, as well. Oh, it's so nice. These walls are very feeling. I really want to lick it. Let's do it. Uh, Give me a review. He's licked it. It was dry. It was, it was dry. Hang on. Yeah, it's really dry. It's dry. Oh, it's like, like residue on my... <laughs> it's dusty. Oh, it feels dusty. Manubi, it's dusty in here. <laughs> um, um, what was I saying? So, Paul Blanc Mall Cop 2. Oh, well, I think... I think people get that you've watched it, and I've... <laughs> seen it a few times. The message I got a few days ago... From Jim. At, like, half past midnight. <laughs> as well. Now, I, I have alarm set on my phone. So, it's always on full volume at night time. So, Why do you do that to yourself? So I can wake up in the morning. Well, no, you put it on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> no, I don't care. Oh, okay. well, usually no one disturbs me, Jim. <laughs> usually no one messages me at half, half <laughs> twelve at night saying, it's better than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> For a film, film about a fat guy, it's surprisingly paced. <laughs> it's like... Oh no, yeah, yeah. For, for a film about a slow fat guy, it is surprisingly fast paced. Mm. Like, compared to the first one, like, they almost do constant smash cuts. Mm. And, like, there's that lot, confused me. Yeah, there's a lot of aerial shots of Vegas, <sighs> especially the hotel he stays at. Oh no, it's any film that involves Vegas, like, they have to make a point that it's in Vegas. Oh god, yeah, but, like. I What's love... the one with Nick Cage? Uh. Where they've got the Con Air. Yes. Yeah, like, they, they had lots of, like, establishing shots of, like, Vegas there, didn't they? Yeah, but this isn't establishing shots of Vegas. This is establishing shots of that specific brand of hotel, which is a real hotel in Vegas. Are you telling me mm? that there's some product placement in there? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> like the scene where he gets knocked out and then they bring him in front of a vending, a Coca-Cola vending <laughs> machine. And the whole place takes... The whole scene takes place in- is it Coca-Cola? It might be Pepsi. Um, the whole, like, scene is set out in front of a can of Coca-Cola. I, I feel like it's Pepis. It, yeah, it might be. Uh, but it, the, regardless. False like, Pepis! Every, every shot of that, like, it's just a reverse shot re conversation. Like, every shot of it has got the Pepis <laughs> logo or the Coca-Cola logo in. And, ooh boy. <laughs> Did it really make you want a, a It made me go, mm, 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 I could do with a cola. <laughs> I could do with a cola drink. Just like our delicious Coke, Coke brand, brand products. Let's have a sweet I'm really thirsty today, sorry. The, the weird thing about this Coca-Cola brand product joke, sponsorship joke that we've got going, is mm. that no one can legit tell. We could just have brought the same empty water bottle in for like... I'm going to remedy this, Adam. <laughs> I'm going to remedy this. I'm going to remedy this. a picture that we're actually drinking Coca-Cola so, brand products. Can you add Coca-Cola in this tweet as well? Yeah, so, um... Also, we know how much rent we have to pay now, thanks, landlord. I know, um, yeah, he sent me that too. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, fine, it's less than I thought it was. Oh, I miss I miss getting high on petrol fumes. <laughs> but that's a different discussion. Um, um so, yeah. But I'm, yeah, like, like Kevin James, we really want to be shills to the companies. Yeah, and like, because that's... If you're going to do anything with your life, like, you might as well associate yourself with a horrific brand. Um, so I'm gonna take this photo. I don't actually know whether this tweet's gonna go out now or uh, my phone camera quality is terrible. Um, good, I've like, also got some Samson product placements, nice. so I'll tag them in there as oh, well. Do, do, because um, we want all the money we can get. Uh, I'm wearing so, a Rolling Stones t shirt as well. If oh, Mick Jagger's got lovely. A just let him know. Having some oh. hashtag yucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, uh, oh god, uh, okay. I'm gonna- I'm going to subtweet Kevin James when this comes out. Oh good, um, no, oh, okay, so having some hashtag yucks talking about- Hashtag? Uh, hashtag Kevin oh. James. Oh. <laughs> um, call, uh, Kevin Blart. Um, Kevin, Blart Kevin Blart Kevin, hashtag Kevin Blart. Uh, on, on, hashtag, uh, on hashtag pod crabs. Nice. Um, that's, that's branding. With... Hashtag Coca-Cola. Can you at the Coca-Cola company? Oh yeah, I'll, I will. Uh, um, <laughs> um, and I'll important. put, I'll put in so we don't get sued the shit out of. I'll put not affiliated. Yeah. <laughs> no affiliation. Ha hashtag ad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, but that's the thing. I feel like a lot of the Adam Sandler, Kevin James, Happy Madison productions sort of like need to have the hashtag ad throughout the whole film. So I'll do, I'll do hashtag 
Hashtag ad, and then I'll uh, tag you in this big boy tweet right here. Thank you. I can't wait for that buzz buzz. Is it ADM underscore punk? That's the one. There we go. That is the one at Evil General Foo oh, on Twitter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there we go. Also, guys, if you've got questions that you want to send on, use mm. the hashtag podcrabs. Also at Kevin James. Oh, also, uh, yeah, Kevin James slash Kevin Block. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, it's worth mentioning the tweet's live. Um, Sweet. So I guess now you can tell when we recorded this because there's a lovely picture of me licking a foam wall. Yeah, so <laughs> now we, we were essentially like time stamping this. Yeah, but um, if you if you dream... If you dare to dream. If you dare to dream of films, Jim, Kevin James has clearly set you on a path for, for dreaming of films. Yes. Uh, are we, is this a segue? This is very much a segue. Okay. Because when, when Jim sent me a message at half, half past midnight. Um, <laughs> uh, he also said that this would be a good topic for the podcast, and I've been curious all week well, like, to see how, how Paul Block Mall Cop 2 can lead can, to a well, series discussion Yeah, we'll discussion do this, because film. the original idea was like, I was going to spring on you mm. um, this subject and how Shrek would fit into it. Okay. Um, but now we're talking about um, what is essentially live-action Shrek. Yes. Um... I wanted to bring up the subject of uh, what what a lot of people, if you don't understand film or story writing, mm. um, there's a general consensus that there is only around seven plots. Yeah. Um, and this was coined by a guy called Chris, uh, Christopher Brooker, who wrote a book a few years ago. But it's um, let's say it wasn't coined, but like it's just, it's an idea that's been going around for yeah. a long time. But like he sort of brought it into light. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are seven basic plots. Like any story that you've heard. Like Pocahontas, um, I, I don't know JoJo's why. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. JoJo's Bizarre Shrek. Adventure. Shrek. <laughs> like all your favorite family or not mm. family hits. Um, they all like sort of revolve around uh, overcoming the monster. Uh, the Rags- hero's journey is the, um, the like the famous example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so the, uh, then also Rags to Riches, uh, the quest, which is the hero's journey, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, voyage and return, uh, comedy, tragedy, and rebirth. So like, the idea is that if you break down a, st- a film into like its simplest core elements, yeah, like, yeah. like generally there's only about seven. And yeah. really, every adventure film that comes out is The Wizard of Oz. Pretty much, yeah. Since The Wizard of Oz was such a big success, um, it's like we need to get somewhere. There it is. Yeah. Um, Here we go. You could probably say the same. I don't know which actually came first, like the first iteration of like Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Like the would you say that's the same thing? Because uh, kind of. Alice in Wonderland is a bit of an Odyssey, um, which is like I really like Odyssey films because they are a bit off off kilter yeah. for that. But generally, it is just like the the thing is still that she wants to go home. Yeah. Which, like, no matter what happens along the way, she still wants to be home. There's, yeah, there's the overarching, like, message of, well, the theme that <laughs> they want to go home. So I suppose mm. that would sort of fall, fall into Voyage and Return. Yeah, pretty much. But this is how it works. Like, um, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, like, the example. Go. Shrek 1. Shrek 1. So, <laughs> Shrek 1. Could you give me a rough outline of the story of Shrek 1, Adam? Because I know you're so well versed in it. Um, him live comfortable, happy life. Um, he listens to Smash Mouth and clean himself in Swamp. Um, <laughs> he farts and Cameron Diaz's name comes out of the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, things go tits up when Lord Fuckwad puts, Lord, um, Lord Fuckwad. puts fairy tale men in his house. And he says no. He doesn't like that. No, he ain't Shrek, cool that. Does, Shrek doesn't want the little fairy tale man in his house. No, he doesn't want any of these fairy tale so creatures. So he goes to fuck up a Dargon. On behalf of Lord Fuckwad. Um, yeah. With his good friend Eddie Murphy. And then <laughs> Danky. <laughs> Danky. And then they they go back. It's weird. Shrek is kind of an anomaly in this sense. When we did story structure years ago in uni. Yeah. Um God, we can say that. We kind of did this as a joke where because like at the time Shrek was the hot meme. Um and like Forever will be. Yeah. And we like, I was like, Sorry, we, went, forever th- we went through every single story structure, and it was surprising how many of them sort of do fit onto Shrek. Yeah. Because like, it's it's overcoming a monster. Yeah. Because Lord Footquad is a monster and must be overcome. Yeah. It's rags to riches. It's rags to riches because Shrek improves his life from farting Cameron Diaz's name <laughs> to being with Cameron Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it's Voyage of Return because he, he goes on in an the adventure. Swamp. Yeah. yeah, he was in the swamp, and now he's not in the swamp. Um, it's and then comedy. He has to get back to that swamp. <laughs> um, it is a comedy because Eddie Murphy's in it. Yeah, it's the quest. Um, so yeah, Shrek very much fits. You know, <laughs> they say only shooting stars break the mold, <laughs> but Shrek fits all the molds. <laughs> Uh, so, I think the only <laughs> one, because it's, it's not, okay, so it's not the only one. But Are you going to say it's not a romance? Because... It is a romance, yeah. Adam. But what kind of love story starts with farting the woman that you're going to be, like, uh-huh. marrying eventually? Every single out? one, I hope. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, it's not a tragedy. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's subjective. <laughs> Maybe in the long run. Oh, okay. So it's it's subjectively yeah, it's... not a tragedy, and then rebirth is the last one. Now, is it is it not rebirth? Because no no one likes Shrek. But then everyone likes Shrek. Then everyone loves but, Shrek. But when he sings, when I saw your face at the end. Now I'm a believer. No, I'm a, that was Donkey though. That was Donkey. What does Shrek sing? He says, "Don't go changing, Try Please me. Um, <laughs> that's good. But yeah, everyone loved everyone loved Shrek at the end because he did a thing. Yeah, he he made the dragon eat the fuck blood, <laughs> and everyone went hooray! Yay! Hooray! We killed Disney. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We we destroyed Disney and won the first animated film Oscar. <laughs> oh, which I so sad. Yeah, no, it's good. But we kind of wanted to. We, 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 I guess. How do you, you've 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 tasked me with Shrek on this one, but I want to task you with Paul Blart Mall Cop. You want to task me with Paul Blart Mall Cop? You, you've seen it more recently than I have. Yes. So sadly. you tell me. Okay. You tell me, Jim. So so, piss flomp flint flomp starts mm. with um, a fat boy. Yeah. Um, with a fat daughter. And his wife like, leave him. And his wife leaves him she, at the start of the film. Because she is too good to be in the sequel. Yes, yes, definitely. Which I can't deny, really, even though her best works is probably epic movie, but <laughs> that's, that's not... <laughs> Which was anything but. Um, yeah, so it starts with... I it, do like Jenna Mays, though. She's cute. Anyway. Oh, she's single now. <laughs> she, she's that damn right. Um, so, yeah, so... Uh, Plim, plim plomp flimp plomp mm-hmm. is 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 a sad man because his wife left him after getting some perspective in a week. Yeah. Um, and then once he's had this downtime uh, of sad times, um, his daughter finds out that she's got into UCLA. She's going to UCLan. Yeah, she's going to UCLan. University of Central Lancashire. <laughs> so she's going to UCLan uh, in Lancashire, <laughs> and um, she doesn't like she doesn't want to upset uh, the the blimp plomp anymore. Yeah. Um, and because he's just found out that he's gonna be uh, going to. Well, you forgot that his mother died. As oh, well. oh yeah, his <laughs> mother gets hit by a fucking milk crate, milk truck, <laughs> 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 which which is so just not any. They oh, don't. It's, no, it's good. Like, like they don't do anything with it. Though. What I like about the start of Pit, Plit Ball is that everything ha- everything that could happen. Just, just went and did it. Just went straight into it. Balls deep. Like, oh, fuck you, Paul Ball. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> so yeah, after Ask Hat Crab Shacks, um, <laughs> after his mum, <laughs> after his mum dies, uh, so he gets gets Anne Hero by a milk crate <laughs> truck, um, which isn't touched upon at any other point no, in the film. It's just the reason he's sad. Yeah, it's just another reason why he's sad. Mm. It's just another, it's another weight well, to go you know, on his mother's, fucking... Mothers are disposable like that. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> like, it's another weight to go on his squidgy, podgy shoulders. Who the fuck's calling me?! <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> it starts with O2O kids, don't answer. It's the government. Yeah. They're gonna take your kids. I'll hit them. Yeah, um... Yeah, so um, Flip Flop uh, Waffle Man finds out that he's going to be uh, going to was it the security the, guards. The, Paul, the Mall Block the co- mall Conference. Block. <laughs> the Mall Block Cop Conference. And he's been told he's going to sing or something. Yeah, he's going to be giving, he's going to be a keynote speaker at it. Yeah. Um, then he finds out that Shock Horror, there's an underlying thing that's happening revolving 
around stealing paintings. Well, some handsome man wants to steal. By some, some handsome man who's got woman. heterochromia. And he's got a hot Oh no, yeah, well. that's the other. Oh, well, I was thinking of the bad guy because he's got yeah, he's no, got he's, this odd, he's good. oddness to him. I like him. Um, I like how crazy he is as well. Yeah. Oh, he assures of of, <laughs> of how crazy he is. He's nuts with that bit. Mm. Um, but so he's yeah, also he's, allergic. He's also allergic to but, oaks. But, but he he says that. And you're like, weird he'd say that, I don't... I can't imagine why he'd say that. that. That'll never come into play, surely. Mm. Um, yeah, so long story short... Um, no, go on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story, Jim, I don't blame you. Uh, yeah, so um, the Blimp Boy's uh, daughter gets stolen. By a handsome boy. By a handsome boy, boy but he, man. he also gets stolen too. Uh, yeah, he also gets stolen too. So everything gets taken away from Everything Blimp gets Pop. taken away from Flip Flop. Yeah. Uh, and he's just got a... He's got to resolve the day. You, you also forgot he had funny Mexican boy. Oh yeah, he had funny uh, Mexican boy who sleeps. Yes, and and, and woman blot. Woman blot and <laughs> and two disc- other guys. Yeah, and well, the, discount John Lovitz. Dis- d- discount John Lovitz. <laughs> yeah, and the just I don't know. It's like that, old old men. They're the super squad. Yeah. Um. So we'll call them the super squad. So the super squad have got a uh, like they've got to get their their um their security mall cop garb together yeah and they got saved the day from the paint thief um and that's basically it the, so let's but the, but the paint thief was the man that owned the 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 hotel with the two eyes oh i didn't know that i think no he was just the customer who got rinsed last time was i think he? yeah i saw you under oh i don't care if i'm honest no, me either. but also blit blanc loves a woman because she's a woman oh no no he doesn't love a woman he doesn't. The That's woman true. loves him. Yeah. The woman loves him and he has to say... The woman loves him because he's Kevin James. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But he f- <laughs> he does find love at the end. He does. Let's not forget about that. He gets kicked by a horse. And it's so fucking bad. <laughs> it's it's CGI horse That like, bit made me throw up in my mouth. Knocked him over. It's so bad. <laughs> they didn't need to do that. that funny. <laughs> they could have just let a horse kick him, which yeah. I would have preferred infinitely more. Because <laughs> he still would have looked back on that and gone, huh? Yeah, no, he would have loved it. He would have seen the Sony checks rolling from his hospital bed. Oh, God, yeah. Um, <laughs> so now you guys, now you don't have to watch it. Also, doesn't one of the the hotel boys doesn't Blake Block say I don't love women because I'm I'm a good he's like he plays the role Kevin James wrote himself to play the role of a man too good to love a woman who already loves him automatically yeah which is like so narcissistic because the woman loves him for no reason no reason whatsoever and then he's also like no i'm too pure yeah like um, he is a man who has absolutely nothing going for him yeah even <laughs> though in the first film he lusted over jenna mays <laughs> like like a fucking, fucking wild norbit <laughs> 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 I don't know what my favourite part of that was, whether you, you mixed up Meet Dave and Norbit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Dave was, like, way better than Norbit. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they're all Eddie Murphy films. Yeah, they're all the same. They're really all, all played by Eddie Murphy. So are we gonna, are we gonna, are we gonna disassemble the... Well, what do you, what do you, what bracket of storytell does... Plink, plink chunk fit into. Well, let's let's establish that um, uh, Flip Flap isn't uh, is is actually a monster, mm, and we have is. to look we have to look at Kevin James, and we all have to accept that he is a monster. Yeah. Um, for even continuing this pissant franchise. I can't wait for Paul to block 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 for three. <laughs> can, you, can you do that again for me? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've gotten to the point where I've said his name. I've like. Mushed his name enough times that I can't properly say. Yeah, it's it's words. <laughs> it's just vowels and consonants <laughs> in my head now. Um, so we can say that it is overcoming the monster mm. um, because of the bad guy that's stealing the paint, um, the Van Goghs. The monster is sadness. The monster is also sadness um, because Paul Blart needs to be a happy man, and he overcomes it by by getting kicked by a horse, um, which I I wish. Depression can only be caused in that way. Yeah. But unfortunately, I'm allergic to horses, so that's, I'd have to find worse. a mule. You'd probably die. Yeah, probably. Um, which, yeah. Um, rags to riches uh, isn't really the case. No, he doesn't become rich at the he end. He doesn't become rich. He does rich. get that sweet security guard gear that he steals. Yes. But it's okay because he's Paul Blanc. Because he's, a, cause he's the, the captain now. Mm. Um, <laughs> um He's he's on a quest, mm-hmm. so the third one is the quest. I think the quest or a is hero's the... journey is yeah. He's he's at this this 
very well out for I for some reason I can't actually remember the name of the hotel Me even either, though it was thrown in weird. my face. Yeah, they like smear it all over the camera. But yeah, like um like an eight. You know why shit. we can't remember it? Is it's because it's a rich people hotel. Oh, and we're poor boys. That it's not it's not for us. No, it's not for us. It's we'd, not we'd for be us banned. at all. We'd sit on the curb and they'd chew us away. Well, they'd, we'd have to climb inside a suitcase and fall into Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you, you're getting your bits mix, mixed up. <laughs> See the excellent writing staff there at Sony Sony Pictures and Columbo Films. Um, <laughs> that, that you, you're thinking of the bit where he's in the suitcase and he goes down the stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, into the man who's absolutely fine and he still falls into even though they both would have died yeah they, they <laughs> both they easily both would have died um, and then him just being in Cirque du Soleil yeah which isn't funny no it's not at all <laughs> no um, it's 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 so angry. Discount John Lovitz and his wife sort of sit there and go ah that's Paul that's it why can't you do that honey mm. so I got a bad hip I got a bad knee, whatever he, it was. He's geriatric. He's geri He's a geriatric. That's a fuck. funny joke. Yeah. Yay. Um. So, the quest. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because he's he's got to stop this man. He's yeah. got to stop this. Who is also a monster. He's also a monster. He's Who's allergic to oats. Oats. Yeah. Um. This reason. heterochromatic man. Mm. Um. Yeah. He can't. He he's got to be stabbed. Somehow. He's got to be staked. If um, only we had some kind of clue to his weakness. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm gonna have to plug in the laptop soon. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I should have thought about this prior. Well, Good. I'm gonna continue talking. And I'm just gonna get the power brick for it. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, so the next one would be Voyage and Return, which isn't. No. Because he doesn't go I, back. I, I to... guess he goes to Vegas. He yeah, he goes to Vegas. He has the voyage, but it doesn't really establish what he does next. Sorry, Jim, I dropped my he, bag there. He goes to sadness. He goes to sadness, and, but and he also return, comes and back. Returns from it. From sadness. Sadness is the overarching message here. Mm -hmm. um, comedy, obviously, it doesn't fit into that bracket. Um, and then finally, it would be tragic. Oh no, sorry, not fine. Penultimately, uh, tragedy, um, which mm. I feel like it sits more comfortably in mm. um, than than comedy. Yeah. Um, because this film isn't funny. No. Like, it's this film fucking sucks. It's Adam. the second Paul Blart. It's the second. Don't Paul mess Blart. with his mall. Don't don't piss on his mall. I'm scared. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we've messed with his mall. <laughs> Do you think he's gonna come for us? I fucking hope so. I want to get chased by a, a large portly man on a Segway. <laughs> that would be sick. You know, I was worried that they weren't going to put Segways in that film. And then the second I saw one in the background, I was like, here we go. <laughs> here we go. that classic Paul Blanc ma ma action. Um, it's become like a stutter. Every time I try and say it, it just gets worse. It's because whenever you try and say Paul... Oh, it's fine. I got plugs down here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, sorry about the noise in the background here. We're I'm surrounded just... by plugs and I tried to help Jim because his plugs like right next to me but there's also plugs right next to him that yeah, I can't oh, see. We're surrounded by like six plugs each. This is Manubi, you did a great job there's on this studio. Here, like, we are so <laughs> sorted. If we there wanted to make like six hundred percent more plugs in this in this tiny how big's this? Um, like this is three probably by two, four feet long. Like yeah two square meters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so like we've got two behind us. There is six hundred percent more plugs in this tiny tiny room than there is in my bedroom. I'd actually go as far to say the, minus the the kitchen, there yeah. are as many plugs in this two by two area <laughs> than there are in our house, um, which would, is a wonderful situation to be in. We're not exaggerating either. We, like, like, if every we room wanted, has two plug sockets in. Yeah, like if we wanted to have a hydroponic setup um, for some auspicious reason to perhaps grow tomatoes. Yes. Um, tomatoes. Like this room would be ideal. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's move past that. Yeah, uh, so yeah, my laptop's charging now. Yeah, good, because the mall couple come for you. Yeah, because. If you start growing tomatoes. Like, yeah, and we can't do that. We can't do that in his, <laughs> in his mouth. Um, my coach will run over. Oh, no, what Jim, a shit show. I had a, um, a situation with Paul Blart Mallcop 2 before it even came up. Okay. I saw Paul Blart Mallcop. Sorry. As a. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I've needed that for years. Um, I saw it as an opportunity because the film is Paul Blart, call on, Mallcop. I don't think they put the call on there, but when you say it, it's Paul Blart Mall Cop. Now, yeah. what I wanted, I didn't want Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. I wanted, I wanted Paul Blart 2. <laughs> Mall Cop. Mall <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted him to maybe like go up in the world. Well, are you suggesting some form of like, like vocational change? Yeah. yeah, like like Paul maybe, Blart. Paul Blart dishwasher. 2 Mall Santa. <laughs> He's got to save Christmas, Adam. Exactly. He's got like, to save Christmas from Mike Mullaly. You, you still don't have to mess with his mall. 
<laughs> but don't mess with Christmas either. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, he's his purpose in life has grown mm. infinitely more. Now like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take away your Christmas and substitute a Kwanzaa. Okay. Like <laughs> so, I want full blast. Who's I want Kwanzaa. Let's Google it. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I don't reserve a lot of time. Oh God, great news! We've got questions. Oh yeah, from no, Joe. yeah, I've seen that. I'm ready for them later. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> see, um, he, he doesn't even necessarily have to stay in the mall. It was also like a really exciting notion for me. And I hope Paul Blart 3 moves on to this. Yeah, I hope they establish like what I wanted was the Paul Blart quadrilogy to end up with like Paul Blart 4 Spaceman. Yeah, like Space Cop. Space Cop. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't mess with his universe. Don't mess with space. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm gonna I'm seeing if uh There's any mascot for Kwanzaa. No. I'm starting to think that maybe Kwanzaa is a dignified religious holiday and or cultural holiday of some yeah, description. Yeah, because Christmas is a joke. Yeah. Um, but Kwanzaa seems to be like a very universally loved and celebrated African philosophy. They give each other bananas and happiness. I'd love that. I'd love someone to bring me a sack of plantains and be like happy. I, lo- I don't like bananas, but I love plantains. Plantains and like fried. Bar. Zamil. Your mum makes the best fried plantain, and I'm I'm always gonna treasure her for that. Zamil, it was really nice running into you and your mum at half past eleven at night in the in the middle of Stoke on Trent the other week. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. It was nice though. You both give good hugs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're doing now is we're mm. gonna we're gonna before we get to Joe's questions, yeah. Joe's segment. Um, so the next. What, what do you want Paul Blart Mark Up 3 to be? Well, I feel like since the first one probably didn't touch as me- touch on as many um, s- of the seven basic plots as the second one, yeah. naturally, we'd have to encompass every single one mm. of the seven plots. And like, Sh- Shrek does it, the way Shrek does it is by having lots of sub-stories, like Not side stories. They're just, just elements. It's just like, Shrek is just a fucking mess. <laughs> Like that's, that's, that's the thing with Shrek, is that when they wrote it, they were just like, we have, let's do this, let's put a bit of that in there. Okay. They didn't think about So we're gonna, are we going to write Paul Blart 3 right now? Okay, but can we, can we, can we start on his vocation? Okay, so... Because I do not want him to be a mall cop, mall cop for the third time. He's not even in a mall in the second film. It still needs to... Okay, so he was casino cop it, then. Yeah. So what... Okay, I so think one thing needs to remain, and it, it can either be the mall or the cop, but it cannot be both. It's obviously going to be cop, I think because so. he was a he was a mall cop, and then technically he was a casino. And cop. you got to remember that Paul Blart Mall Cop Four, the end of the quadrilogy, is Paul Blart Space Cop. So we need so something is... to bridge the gap between Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, Paul Blart Casino Cop, and Paul Blart Space Cop. Got it. Where does he go? Paul Blart Country Cop. Country Cop. <laughs> He's the fucking president. <laughs> Pixels. <laughs> <That's>... Shit! <laughs> it, it was under our nose all along. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and how many times did you watch that? Uh, five. <laughs> all of them in the cinema. Um. You got to stop giving Adam Sandler <laughs> money, man. You got a problem. He needs it. I get confused. I see Adam Sandler and I think it's me. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, I need to give myself my money. <laughs> Because I assume that's what happens the, to him. The, 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 money's, the money's not coming in. <laughs> I'm paying, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm losing money. I'm losing money every time I pay for me and someone else to see pixels. <laughs> which is also like a £20 investment, because I want popcorn. Oh god, yeah. Fuck, I want popcorn. I'm, also... I'm going to say, the cinema that we frequent is a cinema world, which is the highest of high class. That's a very high class cinema. Like, we it's love... It's not a view, though. It's not a view, mm. but... Compared, like, because we're filthy students. Yeah. Cineworld are so good to us, and it's specific though. Cineworld Hanley is so good to us because it knows it's in a student area. Yeah. And it knows to charge five pounds for students. Yeah. But anywhere else, Cineworld is like seven pound fifty minimum. <sighs> sorry. Um. No, sorry. Yeah, but that's still cheaper than the Odeon. Like, the Odeon here is also like five pound a pop. Is it? Yep. The Odeon down my way, like I oh, paid, yeah, no. I paid twelve quid. I think it depends where your cinema is. Yeah, I mean, I'm from the south, which is naturally expensive anyway. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I I prefer Cineworld. Also, the spacing, the way that they set out everything in Cineworld, there is always legroom. Mm. And like, I generally, my rule for going to a cinema, because it's not something I do particularly enjoy. Um, You rubbing your face on this. Yeah, yeah, Mm. it's lovely. Uh, Like, I will try and get the most legroom in the most central spot in the middle of the room so I can get peak sound. 
Um, because See, I try to go to, toward the back if I can. The, the back to the left as well. The back, the back is definitely like a better environment. Um, but you have sound reverberating straight back. So if you're in the center of the room, yeah. it, the sound is like evenly well, spaced. Before I want to feel like you. King of the Castle when I'm watching. Pictures oh yeah, for the fifth time. not a dirty rascal. No. no. <laughs> so yeah, um, are we gonna go with? I mean, do can we go with Country Cop? I think we could. I think. But Pixels has already been done. I feel like Pixels is almost Space Cop though because he fight alien. That's a fair point. And he dress up as Wookiee and do claw machine. Well, <laughs> with a digger. What if he wasn't country cop? Because he still needs to serve someone. And I like serving... it. You know what I like about country cop though is that it also sounds like he's like wearing chaps and a tango and hat. And that could be his, that can be a gag because he loves that. And he's like listening to Shania Twain, Ooh. who's got a new album coming out soon. Jim, get excited. Whoop. Forget the gorillas' new album. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> We've got Shania Twain's new country country yes. western album. I'm excited. How much do you hate yourself? Oh, too, <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, um, well, because I'm gonna throw something else in the in the in the fat blender. Mm -hmm. um, instead of country cop, yeah. Minister of Defense. Paul Blart, Minister of Defense. Cop. Cop. Is he like a security guard to the Minister of Defense? Like I'm saying, or like is he like what's what? Are the, what do the Yanks call um their their defense for? Like Steve Bannon. Is it Steve Bannon? Maybe. <laughs> Can we have Paul Blart advisor to the president? Like the guy <laughs> that runs the military. Uh, yeah. yeah, like maybe because that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like he can either be like country cop. Or he can be the guy that runs the country's defense system. Oh, I like it. What about the sea? I'm just gonna go out there and and have him be Paul Bart Sea Cop. And he like patrols the shores of the seven seas. He he patrols the um non non territorial sea. Oh, okay, what well, so the, the thing the the area of sea that's like three you miles can, out. Yeah, where you can murder people. Yeah. Yeah. So he would be some form of vigilante sea cop. Yeah. I like that. Okay, this is good. This is good. Or he's like a sea cop of like a, a bay area or something. Ooh. And and then he sees a crime happen out out at sea. And they're like, this isn't illegal. And he's <laughs> they're like, they're like well, five meters away from him. And he's like, damn it, you're out of my jurisdiction. And then, but how does he get the sucre? <laughs> yeah, he gets the sucre. That's what they're importing. That They're illegally importing sucre. And does he have to like do like a fatty falls down, like into giant the sea. face down? They like drop a crate into the sea. Full of sucre. And he's like, I'm gonna collapse into the sea off no. this cruise liner that this <laughs> this PO cruise liner that I've been on. Because that's good product, basically. Yeah, absolutely, because every shot every shot will have a PO logo yeah. in it. Um <laughs> even in the sea. <laughs> yeah. Just a down, <laughs> just a sunken PO cruiser <laughs> cruise ship. And he'll tumble off it and land in the um Paul Block Cruise Cop. I think we're getting close. No, we've got it. We've got we've it. We've hit the jackpot. We've hit the jackpot. Cause... So nothing, because cruise ships have shops, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. mall. Exactly. And they also have It's just casinos. a water mall. It's just a water it's mall. It's just both films together on Paul water. Paul water mall. <laughs> Cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he like falls into the water. He sees that they've done, shug done a sugar in the water. Like, and that's like, <laughs> that's the cruise ship sugar. Those, those pirates have said one lump or two. <laughs> they, they and he's put, gone all of it. All, one shipment of sugar. <laughs> I'd, I'd take one of your finest crates, please. And as he, he he's like about to stumble, and like it, it's it's funny because there's like, will he fall in the children's pool to the right, or will he fall off the side into the sugar pool of, of the sea, or to the left? And he's like stumbles about a bit, and then he collapses. And the, and, and the, the audience room. like whoa. whoa. And then they, he falls, but you don't know which way, and it cuts to black, and there's a splash, and you're like, what pool did he land in? And the then one full of kids or the one full of sugar? And and we see him emerging moist like the thing from the deep yeah like or, or the creature from the black like lagoon Russell from the melancholy hill video yeah <laughs> he just walks out he's as this huge. mighty <laughs> this this mighty <laughs> crime stopping beast <laughs> we're like okay so we've mm. got we've got the setting yeah that he is a cruise cop yeah and we have obviously the environment which is uh, the big blue mm -hmm. um and 
we know how he's going to get the sucre. Yeah. Which is like, because that's the turning point of the film. Like, the crux is when he hits the sucre. Yeah. Um, so we need an enemy. We need an enemy. And it, I, I'm going to say that it shouldn't be pirates. No, that'd be too easy. Like, that would be too obvious. I feel like yeah. that would, like, obvious is, is, is a very poor... And I don't think Columbus Pictures could do it well enough where it wouldn't be racist. Yeah. 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 So, like... But they've done the obvious thing twice already because you think casino, you think heist. Mm. You think mall, you think... Mike Vallejo. Mike stunt, Vallejo. Stunt drivers. Stunt, stunt drivers and Mike Vallejo, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not an orca? <laughs> this is great! <laughs> Why so, not? like... So, so the the water Shamu. cop has to t- the water cop has to battle like some Shimu S thing like Captain Fucking Ahab. Yeah. So <laughs> he's like, but it's, he starts on the cruise, Pol Block cruise cop, and then say halfway through the film, he ends up in a piano branded life- lifeboat, um, <laughs> with like seven cans of Bepis. And that's <laughs> that's what he's got to survive on. Yeah. But the boy needs to eat. Mm. Like, and he sees that orca, and he's like, "You're the one that stole that shoot cray. You're the one that, <laughs> that bumped the ship and made the crate fall off. You're the bad guy." Yeah. And he's got a harpoon <laughs> somehow. And it's just it's Moby Dick. Okay, so where we're at now, um, yeah. we've tackled overcoming the monster. Yeah. Um, voyage and return. Obviously, we're on a boat. Yeah, he needs to get back to. So shore. yeah, he's got to get back to shore to see his fat daughter. <laughs> he um, needs to go to the U clan and see his daughter. He needs to go to the University of Lancashire to <laughs> see his daughter. Um, so we've got rags to riches, the quest. Mm-hmm. Will also be a romance as well because the cruise will be his honeymoon to. Yeah, but he's established that to Mrs. Blart Horsecop Miss- from the oh, end of the from it. the end of the film. I've completely forgot that she would probably be in it. Exactly. Like so, so are we are we gonna have a crime fighting duo? I think she'll be on a horse on the cruise, like in um, True Lies. With Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> she'll ride the horse around the cruise for a bit. But when he gets cast astray, she'll be like, "No, Paul!" Um, <laughs> whilst the top this horse, and she has to mall cop the the boat mall. So they've got both bases covered. Yeah, and that's like the romance as well is that she want she want her Paul back. She, uh, so that's yeah. So the, the, would that fall into tragedy that's, that bit? Well, no, that's more romance. You see, see, I'm trying to cover the romance bases here. Okay. I guess it could be tragedy yeah, as well because maybe the, her horse dies. Yeah, the horse. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's tragedy. The horse dies. The whale eats the horse. The whale eats the horse. It jumps over the piano cruiser's boat. Grabs the horse by the neck, <laughs> and rips it limb from limb. <laughs> and like you're thinking of a shamu type whale. Yeah. I'm thinking of like a blue whale. A beluga. A beluga a whale. A beluga whale. Like, or a sperm whale. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they only really, they only really feed on stuff such as krill. Yeah. And it would be very abstract to see something that mainly so eats pink. on krill eat a horse. But I want it to be like at the end of the film. I want it to be Paul Blart. Um, oh, I don't want to spoil. A, yes, you do. A good film. No, I don't oh. want to spoil a good film. Oh. Uh, and I can't really listen. In Kong. Jim, okay. In Kong. I, what I want is to see Paul Blart giant-sized somehow. Okay. Which won't be hard. Um, <laughs> I want to see him beating up a beating on a whale, whaling on a whale, whaling on a whale. Yeah. But then I also want to see him reach inside the whale and pull out the and horse. Pull the horse out. Okay, so maybe with some of the whale's entrails. Uh, that I happen- mean, I'm gonna think entirely mm. of the whale's entrails here. Because uh, like that happens at a point in Kong, and it's incredible. So like, <laughs> so <laughs> you want to see Kevin James reach inside a whale? I like that. Okay, this is good. <laughs> Because this is a good setup for Space Cop. <clears throat> because he becomes That's, he becomes so big, they have to send him to space. They have to send him to space, so he stops thinking. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. Um, so this this giant this giant um, space uh, this giant sea cop. Yeah. Um, so that this, could also be the tragedy well, is that he has to leave. Horse he, cop. he has to leave Horse Cop. Yeah. Um, and it's also a form of rebirth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah, because when he gets to space, they accept him. They are, yeah, because he's he's an omniscient. He's a lunar giant. Yeah, he he is. He's <laughs> he's a dwarf. <laughs> he's a dwarf star that's really big. Um, <laughs> so we've got overcoming the monster, um, uh-huh. uh, the quest, voyage and return. Yeah. Uh, because he becomes a giant man, which also comes under rebirth. Yeah. The tragedy is that the horse the horse is killed, but then suddenly not killed when it 
gets um, pulled out of the it's, sack. It's it's the it's the thing. And the tragedy like, is also that he has to leave. Oh yeah, that too. Mrs. Blart Horse Cop. Um. Uh, so, I mean, this is going to be a comedy film anyway. Mm. So comedy just sort of ticks anyway. Comedy is a. Uh, mm, I see. I've seen the first two, mm. and I'm. I'm not certain. Oh. I'm not certain about this. We're gonna have to make it funny then, Adam. Fuck. He's gonna have to fall down more. He's gonna have to fall down. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and because he's now giant size, yeah. if he falls down, that's entire countries and Tsunami. coastlines. How about he falls down he like swims? And because he, of the rip the, the he, current. No, what he he swims and then he gets to like the, the base of the ocean and finds one of those wacky ocean cliffs. Oh yeah, and he uh, falls like the Marianas in, Trench. Yeah, and he falls into the darkness depths of the cliffs and that's when he become, he become giant. He be but it's funny because he falls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm simple. <laughs> so the only base that we haven't covered here. Yeah. Also, we're at an hour and four minutes. Oh fuck. Um, <laughs> Sorry Joe, we'll do your Sorry, questions Joe. next week. Uh, oh no, we might be able to get one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> no. Um, so the last one is rags to riches. Rags to riches. What could be richer than a giant man who rules the cosmos? If you remember in The Simpsons, giant solid gold Homer. I was exact. I was thinking of exactly <laughs> this. I said giant man, and I had to like restrain myself from saying giant solid. Well, gold man. I've I've brought it from you. Mm. Um, so how are we? Like, would you want to go in that direction? How would we make Paul Blart Mall Cup solid gold? Like. So before he goes to space, because the space will be like perhaps like a setup post credits, yeah. um, he can't. No, I feel like that'd be the end of the film. Is him like being sent to space? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like he's gonna have to go through like because what I'm thinking is that because I want to have that emotional thing where you have to say goodbye to Mrs. Mrs. Blart Horsecock. Yeah. <laughs> so like she's she's on a horse all the way through the film. All the way through the film. <laughs> like they're, they're eating dinner and she's sat on a horse. <laughs> she's sat on a horse. She has to use extra long cutlery <laughs> um, or one of those grabber things like the litter pickers. And when she's not on the horse, when the horse gets eaten. She like she doesn't have any power she, in her like, legs. She has to sit in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> She's got no strength in her body. She, She's never arrested anyone. She's like Johnny Joestar <laughs> from Steel Ball Run. <laughs> <laughs> she just can't move. So him going to so between him becoming a giant boy yeah. and him going to space, he needs to become rich. I've got it. Solid gold segue. Solid. We completely forgot to put a segue in this film. That's how he comes out of the trench. <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> he emerges from the sea, gigantic, riding a solid gold seven story Segway. <laughs> and he goes, Where's that fucking whale? <laughs> Where is this it? This franchise has no swearing in it. It is like surprisingly safe considering the dick that's in it. <laughs> yeah, the it's just like, pissed. Where the fuck is that whale? <laughs> this one's a 15. <laughs> PG, PG-15. Oh, you, you don't want to hear your, you don't want to hear your kids say, hear, hear fuck. Mm. Um, you have to take him out the cinema afterwards and be like, listen, when he said that thing about that whale, I've got it. So mm. he now that he's now that he's a giant man and has some form of like stature apart from you know chunk, mm. um, <laughs> he becomes like because he has to ride a solid gold Segway because it's yeah. so strong even though it's the the softest like metal mm. um, but we'll brush past that no, it's, because because Adam gold. Sandler would no, yeah, um, exactly. he gets endorsed by the boys at Segway <laughs> he, he, and the, they get him anything he wants well, the Segway has like the Coca-Cola logo on it as yeah. well somehow or Bepis we yeah. don't know which one it is include as well as that hotel franchise logo which I've yeah. just forgot and we'll just say it's Ibis for the moment um <laughs> The Ibis budget of um, casinos. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want money? Good news, your car's been stolen. Um, so he gets like he becomes like the face of the seg. Yeah. And that's that's his that's where his riches come from because they'll do anything for this giant man out of fear. Yeah, of course. Because or else he'll stomp them. <laughs> <laughs> do you think maybe he could like sans horse? He he fashions like a segway based device for his. Wife to patrol on. It's just gonna be a segue with a chair on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really wobbly wheelchair. Oh my god, the wheeze. Oh, it's back. It's just a wheelchair. It's just a two wheeled wheelchair with, with a gyroscope in it. 
As soon as the second she sits on it, she just falls backwards. She's like, whoa! whoa! But that's funny because she's fat and it's yeah. funny when fatty falls <laughs> she down. She um, down. <laughs> Kevin James will like that one. Here we go, that's why I married that beautiful horse woman. <laughs> <laughs> he remembers the wedding and she's on a horse. <laughs> and the horse is in like a tux. It, it kicks her again and like winks at the camera like... It was like, oh, we're gonna have to CG that. <laughs> we can't. We can't. We're gonna have to get a low budget CG team in for that. So, are you satisfied that? Uh, no, I fucking hate Paul this film. Paul Blart, C Cop. Paul Blart, <laughs> <laughs> the new, the new fucking Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> he comes out. He's like Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> fucking trident. <laughs> His segue is a trident. Of course. Yeah, that's why it's solid gold. Oh my god. Maybe he I'm meets crying. maybe he meets Neptune when he like falls in the trench. <laughs> and that's why he becomes gigantic and gold. I feel like we're getting every base covered here. Oh we have! Mm. Like I was gonna like we probably haven't got time now because I was gonna do like a four act structure to this as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like that might be a bit overkill <laughs> for something that we'll probably end up gonna going to make. I don't mm. know. Well, if you work for Columbus Pictures, if you work for Sony, Columbo Pictures uh, or Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca 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 brand, you've worked with Sony before. That's you, yeah. Come on, did, um, hit Jack us up. Jill. It might have been Pepsi, dude. What, they did Jack and Jill. It's fine. They worked with Sandler before. <laughs> Oh, oh, that film existed, didn't it? Yeah, oh, that's another. <laughs> Alright, firstly, yeah, we trademarked this idea. I'm gonna write it all down well, on an envelope all and send it to myself. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, we've got, dude, we've got to upload this so fast. I, I know, right? Um, <laughs> what if they make it? What if Paul Bart I'm gonna be so three... fucking angry! Yeah, right? <laughs> what if Paul Bart 3 comes out and it's like. Are you fucking kidding? He's a sea cop now. <laughs> he, he's a giant in the trailer somehow. Ripping the guts out of a whale. Also, there's gonna have to be like a speed joke in there as well. Mm. Like, you remember when they crashed the cruise ship into the? <laughs> like, they're gonna have to do that. Oh, that's what <coughs> that's what horse cop can deal with when block cop's yeah, in the sea. Yeah, yeah. She's like, this. Not only has block cop fallen in the sea to fight that whale, <laughs> but the cop. whale has planted as as well as stealing old Sucre, The whale has also planted a bomb on this PO cruise. Well, and if it goes more than two miles an hour, <laughs> <laughs> we'll all fucking Please, die. Please, Adam, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say that, like, the whale is, like, the main bad guy here, but, like, mm. when... Um, oh, he's got lackeys. Yeah, he's got lackeys. Well, I want to say that, like, Poseidon is, like, the main bad guy because all of these all of these ships invade his ocean, and, like, when Plop Clop plops into the Marianas Trench, he has to go down there and fight him, and then once he kills Poseidon, he takes his trident and becomes giant. Maybe, yeah. No, I like the idea that Poseidon would like approve of Block Cop. Oh yeah. For like protecting the oceans. Yeah. And that's why he gives him the segue. He makes him an honorary sea cop. <sighs> He's like, that whale was it. fucking up my shit, man. Like, he I keeps... couldn't do shit because I live in this trench. Yeah. And I, can't like, move I, I don't want to live reasons. in the trench anymore. This whale, this sperm whale, is, is more powerful every than time a fucking I got, god. Every time I tried to go outside, the whale's like, nah. <laughs> it's like, got you. Suck. Gutty. <laughs> Adam, I think we've done something very special here today. Yeah, I and think by so. special, I mean I'm probably going to be talking about it in therapy. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's good. So we bring it up to him, be like, "Got an idea for Paul? I'll go three and go. Li I'm listening." <laughs> Listen, like, you got an hour. Call <laughs> well, up, well call it's going to take an hour Crane and, and he'll say, "I'm listening." <laughs> uh, on a, I, I want to. I guess I want to finish on a serious note um, because we've been talking about segues a lot. Uh, Jim, do you know how the man that invented segways died? Did he fall off a segway? No, he fell off something. <laughs> Did he fall off? He fell off. He lives near a cliff. <laughs> oh, he doesn't live there anymore. But um, he lived near a cliff. He lived near a cliff. And he invented segways. <laughs> so if anyone at home can put two and two together there. <laughs> Did he segway off a cliff? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... In, in this rip Paul Blart theme honorary episode, podcast in the name of in, John Segway Segway inventor Segway inventor <laughs> John Segway Segway inventor <laughs> um, yeah rest in peace buddy rest in peace Paul Blart man. Mall Cup 3 will be dedicated to you entirely we're sorry <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you for listening again yeah, today thank you for um, listening that was Pod Crabs that was Pod Crabs episode 8 we think yeah um, um, a few a few things um, check out our Twitters yes um, at ADM underscore punk and at Evil General Foo 
Um, consequently, Matt's Kickstarter is still going. Yes, Wonder and Brian is still going. And it has a logo now, and it looks beautiful. Thank you. I did a logo for it. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to say how good it looks, because... <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in cars, check out my Instagram. Yes, Car Club Subete. Yeah, Car Club Subete, S-S-U-B-E-T-E, -E, uh, with Car Club in front of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thanks again, guys. Um, you'll see this on iTunes soon, hopefully. Yeah, and we're praying. Yeah, very other, like, places. Oh, we love you so much. Oh, we do. Oh, you're good boys. Rest and in peace. Girls. Rest in peace, John Segway. Segway inventor. <laughs> <Summer>. <laughs> That's a Bye, guys. Bye.